So we are starting with dive in. Wonderful exercise with some slow swimming strokes. So what's great here is whether you've swum or not, you're using your imagination, you're just copying. You've seen people swim before. So I'm talking to somebody today who maybe can't swim. So it's all about floating and moving the body through the water. So good, you don't have to get changed into costumes if you're a little self-conscious about how you look. Heck, you wouldn't get me in a bikini for any amount of money, I'll tell you that for nothing. Certain things when you get to a certain age, you won't do. So what we're doing is we're pushing the hands forward together, we're opening them up and separating them, and letting that thumb go down. Lovely. Using all of the upper body, upper body strength. We're turning to a crawl stroke, so our head, hand is going side to side. I think they're swimming quicker now. Let's see if we can make these strokes come over our shoulders a little quicker. We've got to get into action quite fast today. All right, sit back in your chair, lift up your legs, and just splash them. So this is imagining we're now doing some backstroke. So we're on our back, we're going to let our hands go back. We're going to look up as we go. Keep these feet paddling. That's good. Just look up while you're doing it. Very good. Now, just to make us work a little bit on that core, we're going to bring the legs back. We're going to try and keep them up off the floor. It's like you're treading water. So your body's being held buoyant in the water and you're just off the bottom. If you're a bit cautious that it's too deep, it's like, oh, bottom's right there. But come on, we're working on these tummies at the same time. And how about breaststroke legs as well? So we're just sliding the legs open and the hands at the same, same time. So that's now breaststroke, arms and legs. So how about trying to do a little bit of side stroke? Now this is quite testing because you actually have to stop in the middle. So I want your legs up, heading that way. Body is just leaning a little bit that way, coming back to center. Leaning out, come back to center. Back to the center. One last one this side. Woo! Now we're going to do everything on both sides. So, legs are going that way, arms this way. If you come back to center, it helps you find your balance at the same time. Good control for the tummy and, and the legs. It's not easy for me either. It's supposed to be stretching us just a little. So there we are, dive in, our first exercise. Now, the next one, really good for our brain, we've got to be counting. So we're going to start with counting, two, or backwards from eight. We go eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Both together. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Clap on one. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three. Clap on the four. One, two. Three clap. So this is all about changing different patterns. It's about our body's ability to respond, react, recover, because I'm going to make us go different directions. So we're going to start now with just tapping three on our knees and one on our shoulders. So it's a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Simple patterns of counting. Two, three, four. Change it now with the shoulders. And then one, two, three, four is on the knee. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. How about going different sides? Where am I going next? Two, three, Four. It's okay to be counting it at home as well. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ha! One, two, three, 
four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to the knees. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Mixing up all those different patterns, it's about our ability to respond, react, and recover. So, let's get these little legs marching. This now is our exercise. It's great for our hip flexors. It's called rocking rockets. So we're just gonna get these legs moving with a little out, step, and a back. Out and back, quite fast. We can use the hand just to direct it, and a little tap as well. More body parts, we're moving. More, we're getting these hearts moving. And let's change legs, other side. Out, in, out, in. You just move within your range. I've had a hip replacement, so I know that it can hurt to move your hip. So you just move what's comfortable for you. We're gonna move it forward to tap that heel and back. Same leg, Te heel. Call it the teal, I don't think that's right. Just checking who's awake over here. Heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. Use the hand as well, let's change. Heel, toe. That's good. Okay, keeping up I hope. How about now alternating? One side and then the other. Always good for right left brain to make sure we're keeping alert. And we're just going to tap it out in front. So keep one leg nice and close to the body so you can get the other leg in front of it with a little fan movement and the other side. Keep going. Music hasn't finished. Got to balance the body. Almost there. Ha! Ah, there we are. That's our third exercise. Okay. Fourth one is going to be called get up, get down. Get down, get up. So we just start with our hands here. Up. Hands here. Reaching forward. We're not going all the way down to the floor. So this is just nice stretching up. Tap your legs, stretch them up. Reach down just a little. Up. When you go up, look up. Up. Knees go down, look down. Look up. Look down. Woo! This one definitely gets you done. Almost at the end of our 10 minutes. Having fun. I hope. I am. If you are, we're all doing it right. Okay, last one, so keep these legs together. Tap on your knees and we're going two under. One, two. Tap knees for two, you're reaching for four. One, two. So this is all about exercising that very vital organ, the heart. Just because we're working it a little harder, by going up and down over our heart line. Makes our body pump blood a little harder. Tap two. Knees two. Okay, we're tapping the knees for two. Two on one side. One, two. Knees for two. Two on the other. One, two. Knees for two. Two down. One, two. Two the other side. And one, two. Very good. How about we do some up and down to finish up with? So, we're going to do tap, knees, up, tap, down, knees, up, knees, down, knees, woo, down, and up. Woo! If it's going too fast, nice to know you can stop. Phew! <laughs> there we are. 10 minutes of age is crazy. It goes so fast, but it is so good for you. We got all the body parts, joints and moving. We've used our brain, we've counted, we've responded, and I hope that you've had as much fun as I have. So, allowed to get off the couch now, allowed to get that uh, glass of water, and see you back in a few minutes for the second half. And welcome back to Active and Healthy with Gina. 
I hope you did your 10 minutes of exercise to get our show started today. You've loosened up all those joints, got the brain stimulated, had a little break, maybe grabbed a glass of water, and you're ready now to listen to our interview of the week. I'm delighted this week to welcome the founder and the MD of Geritech, uh, Mr. Rain Struble. So welcome to Thank the show. Nice to have you with us. Thank you so much, Gina. Wonderful to be here. It's always nice for the viewers to get a little sense about uh, background of the person that I'm talking to. And I was interested to, to read your start, uh, which is really kind of relevant to what you now do. So can you tell us where you came from, where your <laughs> early years were spent? Yes. Um, I always say that my only claim to fame is that I grew up in an old age home. Unusual. Yes, so if you want to know where I got my knock in life, it's being a, a child in an old age home. Um, I always joke, every morning I went to school I had to see who's waiting for me in the passage for a kiss and a hug and by, by second break um, I was still smelling of 4 seven eleven. So, but yeah, it somehow I think planted the seed. How many years was that? I mean, from what, what ages are we talking about? Um, it was 12 years altogether wow. that my mother was the matron okay. of, of the care home. And um, I, I was then in hostel, but you know, all my weekends were spent there. Uh, my dad gave it one look and moved out to the, to the little seaside village, just uh, about 30 kilometers from, from Heidelberg, uh, Witsand. Um, so we commuted between the care home and, and um, you know, spending quality time together. Uh, but yeah, the, about 12 years, care home. You must have been something of a novelty for the <laughs> residents, because I'm quite sure they weren't used to having yeah. small children. Did you have brothers and sisters? I have a sister, yeah, she's three years older. Um, and that, that's the magic thing where now my work is around um, transformation of care homes. And, and one, of the, one of the things that we miss most in care homes is that intergenerational connection. So it is about bringing children and, and animals and, and plants back into what we call a human habitat uh, to make it less institutional. So yes, it was an interesting um, way of seeing a, a different angle on the old institutional old age home. But did you ever think that would then be an never, area that you never, would go and work never. in later on in your own life? Never. I mean, literally the day my mother retired, I said, please, <laughs> please, I don't ever want to set foot near any old person again. Um, and lo and behold, 21 years ago, I realized I have a business, um, Geratech, and Geratech is an acronym for Gerontological Research, Training, Education and Caring. Um, and yes, I, I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would spend my life um, in aged care. Uh, but yes, I had a good, good foundation, good training. It's an unusual uh, beginning. There are not many people, I think, who can say that's where they, they grew yes, up as yes. a child in an old age home. Uh, so tell us a little bit, please, about Geritech. You've given us the highlights there of, of what it stands mm. for um, and what the mission is and what you're now doing. Mm. Uh, as I say, I started the company 21 years ago uh, primarily as an outsourced catering company, uh, but very, very quickly realized um, the importance of nutrition um, in, in the aging process. So we had a very specific focus uh, of bringing dietitians in uh, and looking at the nutritional status of older people in long-term care. In 1997, the University of Stellenbosch did a research study uh, where they looked at the, the interaction between nutritional status and independence in activities of daily living. Now that's very interesting. Uh, the study was done by Professor Labadarios uh, and they looked at, uh, they used Nestle's mini nutritional assessment uh, which is a wonderful assessment tool. It's, it's free and gratis on the internet. Um, there's also a self-assessment that people can do. But they looked at, at, at when nutritional status is compromised, what does it do to independence 
in the activities of daily living. I think Yolandi spoke about that. Uh, the activities of daily living are the ability to dress yourself, eat by yourself, go to the bathroom by yourself, uh, walk and use the um, shower or bath. Yeah. And um, it is found that the minute nutritional status is compromised, uh, independence in activities of daily living um, is compromised. So the two go hand in hand. And that, is, that started off a, a whole new dimension in, in our company where we, we really make it our business to see uh, that our elders have optimal uh, nutritional status. So it's not only about the food that they eat, it's about the medication that they take, uh, it's about their ability to, to eat. Uh, sometimes, you know, as they as they get older, they might have problems with their dentures or swallowing or um, saliva, uh, the interaction between medication and, and nutrients and all those things. So we became a specialist uh, service provider uh, to really so focus... starting with catering to begin with. Yes, yes. yes. Specifically for their nutritional yeah, needs. Yeah. And now it's expanded. We do caring and uh, nursing and management and consulting and all sorts of things, yeah. So it's grown to cover many, many different areas. Yes, absolutely. Now that assessment you were talking about, is it something anybody can get hold of and, and absolutely. good for a family to be able to look at maybe with, with their own um, older generation to make sure that they're taking care of them correctly? Absolutely. You know, it's a screening tool. Um, it's available, as I say, on the internet. It's called the Mini Nutritional Assessment. It's designed by Nestle. Um, and it gives a very clear indication of the risk of malnutrition. Now, older people are, are at, a, at a high risk of, of malnutrition for, for all the reasons I mentioned. Um, and of course, the minute nutritional status is compromised, as I said, independence, <coughs> strength uh, is compromised, muscle loss, um, infection, uh, uh, you know, the, the slightest flu that comes around, you'll get it if your nutritional status um, is compromised. If you're not strong, you're far more susceptible to picking Absolutely. up all sorts of things. Absolutely. Uh, longer hospital stays, uh, return to hospital, uh, wound healing is, is compromised radically. Uh, so nutritional status is, to me is, is that the number one thing because it will affect so many other areas of, of your life. Um, and ultimately, you know, we, we see that so many elders think that uh, weight loss is normal. You know, I'm old now, weight loss is normal. Yeah. Weight loss amongst people over the age of 65 is an absolute red flag uh, because older people tend to not lose fat but lose muscle mass. And of course, thanks to your 10 minutes, uh, you know, that really is the most important thing is, is to maintain muscle strength. Yes. Yeah because the minute you start losing muscle strength, uh, you have a much higher risk of falling. And of course, again, you know, falling is the number one reason why older people lose their independence. Yes. The reason why people become institutionalized um, is as a result of falls across the globe. Now, falling um, is not a normal part of aging. We all fall. Uh, but if we don't take care of ourselves in terms of nutritional status, muscle strength, <coughs> uh, balance, uh, we, we will find that people are at much higher risk. Um, and, you know, falling, falling is one thing, but the fear of falling then creeps in. Um, and that is often more debilitating than, than the falling itself. That's right. And then they think they can only get out if they have a walker or if they have a stick or somebody with them. And uh, they then, as you say, withdraw and don't get out the way that they should. So, and it's something I stress so much within the exercises. And having taught for two years, it's something I'm really seeing in the people who consistently come to classes, yes. that their balance is better, that they're walking better. And uh, it's a joy to see, yeah. to, to realize you can change it around, even when you're in your 80s. And 90s. And, to, and 90s. It's never too absolutely. late. It's never too late. You know, it's, it's fascinating also that, that when people start developing this fear of falling, as you say, uh, they'll say, well, I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to go uh, to mosque or to church or to, to the library or you know to these uh, interactions so so they withdraw and then of course uh, they start getting more and more lonely yeah. uh, which results in them getting more and more depressed which means they would even do even less 
um, you know, their eating habits would deteriorate more and more. So now instead of actually going shopping or interacting and socializing with the family, um, the, you know, they would start eating um, coffee and a rusk for breakfast. Uh, so it's a vicious circle and, and they, the, you know, the one tends to exacerbate the other. Yeah, I'm sure it does. So, you know, yeah, nutritional status and independence in activities of daily living, keeping up your muscle strength. Uh, of course, um, the other thing is that our bowel and our bladder, um, I mean our whole peristaltic movement is controlled by muscle. Yes. So muscle loss is not only increases the risk of falling, uh, but it also increases the risk of incontinence. And a lot of older people um, live with, with chronic incont incontinence. Of course, they're too embarrassed to tell anyone about it. If you look at the research, doctors don't ask about it. Um, and again, something that, that should be transient um, becomes a chronic disease. And again, it's an incredibly debilitating disease because now even more so they don't want to go out in public because they're they're ashamed of, of wearing incontinence wear and 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 so yeah. and or else they might be worried that they've got to find a bathroom and can they move quick enough to one and Absolutely. it's all of those type of things Absolutely. as well. Yeah. That's another kind of benefit I've seen from people in the classes have actually commented um, that I mean and my classes can be thirty or forty five minutes long mm -hmm. that they feel that their digestive system is improved because you're working your whole um, your whole core you're stimulating your digestive system which is obviously also good for you uh, but you're quite right that's mm. pretty critical about mm. the nutrients that have mm. got to go in mm. first yes but also you know the new the, the muscles need nutrients yes so um, you know the two go absolutely hand in hand the other thing is with 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 our um, you know bowels and bladder uh, is of course oxygen you know cellular uh, um, adrenaline you know it needs to be stimulated uh, and again the more sedentary the lifestyle becomes uh, the more the whole metabolism will just slow down yes. so so exercising is, is absolutely essential to yes. keep the whole peristaltic uh, digestive system going right. uh, but more than that the, the the number one reason why why most older people become incontinent is because of muscle muscle loss right. and of course exercise especially pelvic floor exercises yes. is the number one um, I don't want to use the word cure, right. but uh, the number one uh, uh, form of exercise that can actually greatly, greatly, greatly help to reduce the risk of incontinence. Right. So everything we want to do on the show is all about helping improve the quality of life for our elders, and there is an awful lot for us to cover. Mm -hmm. So Rain, what I'm going to say is we need to go to part two, and uh, because I'd love you to talk about our geriatric giants in next week's episode. Fantastic. Wonderful. So thank you for being with us this week and we look forward to doing part two and hearing about the geriatric giants mm. immediately afterwards. Fantastic. So everybody, I hope that you found that of interest and um, I'm really looking forward to hearing even more about this. All of this is so relevant to you being able to take care of yourself for you maybe as a younger family member concerned about your mom, your dad, your grandparents on improving the quality of their life. So I will look forward to seeing you back next week for Active and Healthy with Gina. Thank you for joining me.